we're going to start right from the beginning. So we'll start at the login screen. So there's two workflows, user-based archive workflow and policy-based. We're going to go through the, the user workflow first. The users would log in with their Active Directory user account, which means their shared permissions are factored into what archive data they can archive and what data they can recall. So when I log in, there's a default landing page, and this is the icon here for Smart Archiver. Now in this version, you're going to see IFS paths. In the final version, users would see the SMB share, something they're familiar with. Um, they would not see the full IFS path, but Right now, we will uh, be seeing the full path. So we've configured one folder for archive permissions. Administrators decide what folders are allowed to be displayed for archive purposes. Separately, on the recall side, which is on the right-hand side over here, users can decide, or administrators can decide what folders will allow recall. You can have an archive only without permissions to recall or any combination. And this is on a per folder basis. So we'll go ahead and click on projects. So there's no archive data right now. So we're gonna go ahead and archive um, one of these folders. I can, of course, archive everything with this button here, but we're just gonna pick uh, this folder here and click archive. This tells the user that the data is queued to be archived, but is not yet archived. So it will eventually move over to the right hand side which tells the user the data is archived until then it'll say staged and it will be moved from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen once it's fully archived so the data is now moved into an area in the file system where the user does not have access so if there's multiple users archiving data this will queue up all the data for the day that needs to be archived there's a schedule that you can decide when it would happen. Typically, this would be, say, at midnight. It would archive all of the requests for the day into S3 storage. In this case, it's going to be AWS and could be anywhere. In this version, it's not storage tier aware, but the final version will be, which means I could place this data into deep archive. So what happens when the user wants to recall the data? Well, we'll go through the archive and recall workflow in just a second. I'll explain what happens at each step. So if I wanted to archive more data, I'd simply just click each of these up arrows. All files folder has been moved and there's a down recall button. So let's look at the, the options that the user has. If I click into the folder on the right hand side, I see there's three files. If I really just want one file to work with, we support a single file download. And this actually uses a time-based authentication that's transparent to the user. So if I want to download this file directly from the archive, I can simply do that and it'll download it directly to your browser and won't recall it to the file system. So that's obviously useful for, for single files. If I want to restore more data in bulk, then I'll come back here and I'll click the recall button. Now, before I do that, it's important to understand the file transparency that's used with Smart Archiver. So if we look here, we can take a look at the metadata. So all the, all the permissions and date stamps are, are encoded as normal. And there's two other buckets in use here. There's a staging bucket. The data could be staged and then recalled in bulk for all the requests for the for the day so there's this bucket and then there's a third bucket that holds data after it's been deleted from the staging area so this is a way to see what data has been uh, recalled quite easily you can also set a lifecycle policy to automatically empty the trash so let's come back here to the staging bucket and we'll go ahead and request a recall So that's submitted the job. This won't recall until the schedule runs. So now we can see the data has been staged. 
it'll be here temporarily and this will be deleted once the recall has placed the data back into the file system and the user would see this data underneath their SMB share so let's go over and take a look at the bucket itself so if we take a look at the bucket called trash you can see the data is sitting here so we know that this data has been recalled if we go over to the staging folder it's empty so the data has been uh, deleted from here and copied into the, the trash can now the data is still in the main archive bucket so if the user recalls data and updates it makes some changes to it they can re-archive the data and it will update the, the files in the archive So you can see how easy it is to archive and recall data, single files, entire folders, just a matter of a couple of clicks. There we go, stage three more folders. Thanks for watching.